Hi there and welcome back. In this video we're gonna make our game run endless. So by the end of this video we're gonna have a working prototype of our game. And if you want to try out this prototype on your device, there's links in description. Just a heads up, in the next video we're gonna look at some code. So if you're interested in that, make sure you don't miss the next one. Now in the previous video we've created a game over screen and the challenge that we left you off with was to modify the font. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Let's go to our font editor and we're gonna use a light blue color for our font and we'll turn off the gradient and let's also add a stroke with a width of two and we'll draw a shadow. For the font type, let's switch to use Comic Sense and that's the font that we're gonna use. So we can refresh now and we can see the updated font in our game. And now in this video, we're gonna make this game run endless. So let's go to our 2D world and we'll need to do some preparations. So first let's clean up some things. And currently one of the things that we're using is a ground for both the bottom and the top. And we'll actually make a separate asset for the top. So let's go select the ground and click D to duplicate. And we'll just rename it to top. And let's switch the color to some grayish so we can see the difference. And then we'll remove the current ground and place our top in. Let's check our camera. Make sure that it's displayed correctly. Now let's make sure that that top is positioned in the center and we can go to the position and for X, make sure it's set to zero and that will make it positioned in the center. And for scale in X direction, let's put a whole number. So we we'll use 16 and let's do the same thing for the ground. So change X position to zero and X scale to 16. And if we did that, so it'd be easier to create new scenes. So now before we start creating new scenes, we need to set up the start and end position of our scene. We can find the settings for those points in our outliner. And here's the start and the end. So let's configure the start first. And currently we can see that the start point is on the bottom of the ground. And we want to actually position it right here. So we can roughly position it and then we want to rotate it so that it would be pointing into our game. And that's a rough position, but you have to make sure that the position of these points are not rough, but exact. And you can do that in the options. So you can see for rotation, we have 89.79 and that should be negative 90. So let's fix that. And then position for X, we have negative 15. And since our scale was 16, Let's set it to negative 16. In our case, the Y does not matter as long as you start and end at the same Y position. And we'll set it to zero to make it easier. And now let's go to the same thing for the end. So we want to position Y at zero, X at 16, and rotation at negative 90. And now we can try to duplicate the scene and see if it's going to work correctly. And you can find the list of scenes at the bottom of our window. And currently we have only one scene, start. To duplicate the current scene, we can click on that scene and then use D key to duplicate. And now you can see that we have two start scenes. So let's rename the second start scene to one and our name of the scene changed here. Now before we preview, we need to fix something. So if you take a look at the outliner, we can see that we have two players. One is grayed out and the other one is white. And the reason why there are two player objects is because we have one in the start scene and that's the one that is grayed out. And whenever we place a character in the start scene, that character will be automatically added to the other scenes. And to make sure that we don't have two players at the same time, we need to remove the player from our first scene. So let's select that and click delete, remove it. And now we're just left with the grayed out player. Now let's click preview. So here's our start scene. We finished our start scene and you can see that our next scene started and there's a little gap right there. And now the game will continue without stopping. Now we can remove that little gap by scaling the ground and the top by just a little bit. So instead of 16, let's do 
and same for top 16.1 in the X direction. And let's click play and see if that fixes that issue. And now we no longer can see that gap. And that's all we had to do in Billow Box to make our game to run infinitely. Now, of course, we have exactly the same scenes in start and scene one. And if we keep it like that, the game is not gonna be that fun. So to make it more interesting, now it create different levels. You can move the enemies around and create your new levels, however you want them to be. And once you set up the scene, we can create another scene and we can select the scene one in the bottom and click Z to duplicate. Again, we have to remember to remove our player. So select the player, remove it. And also to keep it clean, let's rename our level to two. And here we can create some more variations. And when we make those variations, we can preview now and we can play the game. So we start with our start scene and then we have, this is our scene two that is loaded. And the reason why it's scene two and not one is because by default, Buildbox has a random scene loading. So it chooses randomly which scene will be loaded. Now you can continue this process on your own and build out all the levels that you want. Like we mentioned in the beginning of the video, there's a links in description if you want to try out this prototype game on your device. And this is it for this video. And in the next video, we're gonna start looking at some code.